I think we've all seen looping animations in Blender. Here's a problem that I've encountered and I'll solve that I found to fix it. Let's say that I'm animating this cube and I want it to rotate on its Z axis. I'll throw in a rotation keyframe. I'll go to the end of the comp, rotate on the Z axis, 360 degrees, enter I to add in a rotation keyframe down to the timeline, V for vector. And all of a sudden, boom, we've got a cube animating in Blender. It's looking awesome. We're gonna approach the end of the timeline and it's going to loop perfectly. No problem, looks great. But all of a sudden, as I'm adding more and more stuff to the scene, I'm like, it's a little too slow. I wish that it was able to be faster. And that's no problem. Uh, I could just come in and I could move the second keyframe further and then I could come in, bring in the end of my timeline and it's, and it's rotating faster, still perfect. But what happens if I've added a bunch of elements to my scene is I have to go through and change those keyframes for every single element that's moving. And that seems like a little bit much. So here's a idea that you could use that maybe could speed up that process if you want to use it. I'm gonna add in a value and let's try and make this cycle through different colors um, on the rainbow and that it'll come back to red or blue or whatever um, so it's the same as the first frame as it is on the last frame. So let's grab whatever frame number we're on, copy it as a new driver, paste driver. How many frames are in our scene? And we'll paste the driver. Let's rename this uh, top value to current frame. And we'll rename the second one to uh, total frames. Okay. And then let's throw in some math because we want to figure out how far we are through uh, our timeline. And this can give us a percentage, which is pretty cool. So we're going to use divide, uh, one divided by 150, one 150th. Um, uh, and we can use that to move us through a hue and saturation wheel. So let's just add in hue saturation value and an RGB. I'll come into the RGB, make it fully one color. And if I come in and add it to the base color, you can see that it's working there. And maybe this can help us visualize a little bit what we're gonna be doing. So instead of RGB, we'll go to hue, saturation, and value. And if I move the hue around, you can see that we rotate around the outside of this circle. And when we have a value of zero, we're on red. We keep going, keep going, keep going. And then all of a sudden we have a value of one and we're right back where we started. This is exactly what we need. So let's throw this uh, into the color and throw the color into the base color. And then let's take this, what's coming out of the divide, which is gonna be a value between zero and one. And it's gonna progress up as we move through the timeline and throw that into the hue. Now, if we hit play, we have the rotation. <laughs> let's clear the rotation because that's using keyframes, which is not what we're trying to do. But you can see that we're just now rotating through the colors. And when we're halfway through the timeline, we've got this color that we want. And when we're at zero and 150, um, we're, we're looping through, which is great. The nice thing now is I can just extend this, hit play, and it'll just be a little bit slower to complete the loop because it's just using math. It's saying the current frame that I'm on divided by however long our, our timeline is, which I think is, which is pretty cool. Let's see how we could do that because we did the rotating with keyframes earlier. How would we set that up in geometry nodes? So I would do the same thing, bring in a value, duplicate the value. Let's bring in some math, divide, divide the first number by the second number. We'll take our current frame that we're on, copy as new driver, paste driver, total uh, amount of frames, copy as new driver, paste as new driver. We'll bring in a transform, which will let us rotate. And you can see that it's doing that. And it's like, why is it rotating weird? Uh, I did not apply my transforms. So uh, right now, if I go and I hold Control A, I can apply all transforms. And then when I'm in geometry nodes, it will behave the way that I want it to. Oops, messed that up, but that's okay. We we corrected it really quick. So uh, you can see we wanna get 360 degrees of rotation in here. And we could just come in and we could keyframe it. 
Uh, but we're not going to do that. We want to do it procedurally using our values and our divide function. So since we only want to do, we only want to affect the Z component, let's use a combine XYZ. But you can see that this is already a little bit different. This one has degrees in it. This one doesn't have degrees in it. So when we connect these two and I start going up, I'm not even at 300, I'm nowhere near 360 and I'm already, I've already rotated around a few times. And that's because this is going to be in radians. This isn't in degrees. So we are going to need one more math function uh, in line to convert to radians. Okay. So now is this going to work? Doesn't look like it. But if we go to the very end of our timeline and we watch it, it jumps back a little bit. It's like, huh, why is that? So if we think about it, we're outputting a value between 0 and 1 but we're trying to get to 360. So we're gonna have to bring in a map range. And instead of going from, uh, which we're doing, we're getting zero to one, we wanna go zero to 360. So now if we hit play, <laughs> my graphics card's being weird. There we go. Boom, perfect loop. So we can go through that one more time. We've just got our geometry. We're transforming it. We want it to rotate only on the z-axis uh, because we this is originally in degrees, but our combine xyz is in radians. We need to convert to radians. Our range that's coming in is 0 to 1, but we want to send it 0 to 360. And we're taking our current frame that we're on and we're dividing it by how long our timeline is. And that's it. The cool thing is now both of these, we can extend our timeline or compress it. We can make this just 50 frames long and it'll work perfectly. So this is a cool little setup that I came up with and I haven't seen someone else use it. Doesn't mean it hasn't been done, but I think it's a cool little trick. So if you're working on some procedural looping animations, maybe this is something that can help you out. Best of luck.